Evolution loves crabs. Evolution is the process of optimizing a species for its environment, whether it's through structure or behavior. Evolution and life have been best friends for billions of years. Evolution has helped life discover how to eat sunlight or develop entirely new structures or organs or migrate out of the ocean or learn new hunting strategies or hiding strategies if you're a prey organism. Without evolution, life would be completely stagnant and nothing would improve. We would still be at the bottom of the ocean eating chemical soup. But what if evolution has already found an organism that it thinks is perfect? What if it doesn't want to make any changes? Let's go back some. There are a couple types of evolution, but the one we're going to talk about today is convergent evolution. Convergent evolution is when two species that aren't related evolve and adapt to the same structures for the same ecological niche. A niche is a role in an ecosystem, like an earthworm eats stuff and turns it into nutrients that a tree can use. That's its niche, that's its role in the ecosystem. A frog's niche would be to eat earthworms and keep their numbers down, and also to be eaten by predators, such as a hawk, whose niche is to keep prey populations down. An example of conversion evolution would be sharks and dolphins. They both have long, slender gray bodies and are adapted for swimming fast in water and eating fish. So they have the same niche, which is keeping fish populations down, but they are not related. One's a mammal and one's a fish. So they're completely different lineages, but they have the same niche and the same adaptations and structures. Both of those organisms have the best structures for their niche, which is, like I said, eating fish. Another example is a bat. A bat is a mammal that can fly, one of the only mammals that can fly, but it eats bugs. And so to be more effective at eating bugs, it evolved wings so that it could fly. Birds and bats, of course, are not related, but they both have wings. They both have evolved to have wings because that's what's most convenient for them and their niche. So would you call a bat a bird? Of course not, because it's a bat. If a dog evolved wings and a cat and I don't know, frogs and earthworms, if they all evolved wings and started flying, would you call them birds too? Of course not. You would call them flying frogs, flying worms, I don't know. But you wouldn't call them birds. All of this sounds ridiculous, but it's what we do with crabs. Crabs have been found to evolve five separate times. Let's just hold it. People call a lot of things that aren't crabs, crabs. If evolution keeps evolving crabs again and again through different lineages, through this convergent evolution, does this mean that crabs are the perfect animal? Because evolution is always, like I said, trying to create the optimal creature. Why is it evolving crabs so much? This is called carcinization. And before I get into why carcinization even happens, let's get to know what a true crab actually is compared to a false crab. Well, for starters, true crabs have a hard exoskeleton and their abdomen is protected underneath their hard carapace. They also have 10... They also have 10 limbs, two claws, and eight legs. Hey, this is Future Me. I completely left out a very important detail. Of course, you can tell the difference between a true crab and a false crab by the amount of legs it has or whether or not it's all squashed underneath its hard carapace. But the main way to really know is to check it. That was my cat. Is to check what infra order it's in. True crabs, this is a spider crab by the way, is part of the infra order Brachyura. And false crabs are all part of the infra order Anomura. That took so many takes. That was very hard to say. Anyways, back to the beach. Typically in false crabs, you'll see they only have two or three pairs of walking legs. So you know automatically that they're a false crab. False crabs can include hermit crabs, king crabs, porcelain crabs, coconut crabs, yeti crabs, and thousands more. With true crabs, you can expect to find mud crabs, stone crabs, snow crabs, spider crabs, and of course, thousands more. But let's dive in a little bit. Hermit crabs, they have three pairs of walking legs and a pair of claws. You know automatically that they're a false crab because they don't have four pairs of walking legs. They only have three. Also, about half of their body is not protected underneath a carapace. Also, a little tidbit, a little fun fact for you. Porcelain crabs and Alaskan king crabs are actually descendants from hermit crabs that have evolved to not need a shell that they find on the beach. A good example of carcinization is a squat lobster. Squat lobsters are well, they're basically lobsters, but their tail is curled underneath their body. I mean, you could say that a squat lobster looks like a crab because it 
does kind of it just has three pairs of walking legs rather than four and its tail is not gone like in a normal crab it still has its tail it's just curled underneath its abdomen who knows maybe in a couple million years its tail will shrink away and it'll just look like a normal false crab of course you and i will never get to see it but maybe a squat lobster can become a squat crab anyways all of this is nice but here's the real question why I mean, why is nature so persistent on creating crabs again and again? Well, the answer is pretty simple and maybe a little bit disappointing, but the answer is crabs are just that good. Seriously, that's why. Crabs are perfect for their environment, just as they are. I mean, think about it. They're little dexterous, speedy little tanks with two big defense mechanisms that can also be used to tear apart anything that they choose to eat. So they're opportunistic eaters as well. I mean, they're perfect. I, I don't know how else to say it. And I'm not just trying to compliment crabs, but they are genuinely evolutionarily perfect creatures. So of course crustaceans want to copy crabs because they're perfect. But are they really the perfect body type? Or is there possibly anything better? Can it get better? Well, yes, actually. What I have here is a horseshoe crab. Well, a molt of a horseshoe crab. As horseshoe crabs grow, they shed their exoskeleton and they can be found on beaches. That's what I have here. They're not crabs or even crustaceans, but the reason they're in this video is because they have not changed for 400 million years. That is almost half a billion years. 400 million years of existence and not changing once is incredible. I mean, things change so drastically. Humans have changed a monumental amount in only 2 million years. To stay the same for 400 million years is unheard of and unseen in any other species on the planet. So of course, if evolution, as I said, is always trying to optimize a species, it is always working towards making the best organism possible on this planet or its ecosystem, and these haven't changed for half a billion years, does that make these the perfect animal, the perfect organism? Well, I don't know. And it's probably not possible to know because there could be an even better species arising. And actually, I guess you could say humans are even better because have these guys been to the moon? I don't know, it depends on how you wanna look at it. But if there's one thing to take away from this video is that if you wanna be the perfect organism, first off, grow a hard outer shell grow a bunch of legs, and visit the beach. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you learned something. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, check out my other, other videos, which actually at the time of uploading this, there aren't any other videos because this is my very first video. So maybe if you're seeing this right after I uploaded it, check out my other videos in a couple weeks because this is the only one right now. Do not eat my plants.